done. Put me on the he internet. Well, you're on the internet. Hello, internet. I'm on the internet. We're live. We are the nerds. This is the Nerd Ledger. I'm Cage. That's Chair over there. Chair. Yep, over here. Yep. We are here again, once again. Every Thursday, we are here live on twitch.tv slash the nerd ledger, 5 p.m. PST. So if you ever want to catch us live and like hop in the chat and whatever and be part of the conversation, you know, you can come and join us. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, the, if you want to watch us, uh, the video of our live stream will then be on YouTube. And um, if you don't want to watch us and just want to listen, the audio is available wherever you want to listen to it. So well, there you go. you get your favorite podcast. Yeah. So there, there's all of that. Um, but today, today is much like the same as the past few weeks, where we just talk about X Men and uh, and the Bad, Bad Batch, Batch and some news yeah. and whatever. So yeah, any um, dumb drama going on in Hollywood, the oldy Hollywood land. Uh, I mean, th there is. <laughs> uh, there's but, always, there's always drama. Yeah, there's always just like ridiculous things happening in Hollywood and all over the place. And, uh, mm. you know, to me, it's like not ever really worth talking about because most people don't care. It's like on the Internet, people care because people want you to click on their videos and watch what they have to say and then be outraged about things that just, again, people don't care. So... Hmm. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Do that, we care though? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, no. I mean, you don't like no. sitting around like just obsessing over rich people all the time. No, I think that's really stupid. No. I mean, if if you want to talk about uh, the dumb things happening in Hollywood, the, there's a new actor playing Doctor Who, um, and he did an interview, uh. And people Man, are just behind the times. people are misquoting like the shit out of it, um, and people are mad at him because uh, for people who don't know, the new person playing Doctor Who is a is a black person, um, and they he pretty much like the what's being quoted from what he said is like, um, a lot of white actors are very mediocre and they're celebrated, and the only way as a black person. Uh, being an actor to be celebrated is you have to be exceptional um and so you have a lot of people saying oh it's a victim mentality and he's crying and it has nothing to do with your skin color and blah 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 and and i i didn't read the full article but i did read a lot of the context and what he said and he, he was more or less saying like that was his experience, uh, experience and like that was yeah. not not just experience but like that's how he viewed it is the only way he would ever be able to make it is if he was exceptional is if he strove and and like he he couldn't allow himself to be anything less than exceptional because he feels that there's no way he'll ever get the roles that he wants or he should get because you know he's not exceptional that that's kind of what what i read from it but um Obviously, then you have people mad. You have other people, especially people yeah. who can relate to that, saying, yeah, I mean, that's how it's always been for people of color or people of this minority group or whatever. Like, you work twice as hard to get half as much kind of thing. And, like, you know, I, I, I understand, again, like, the, you can't have these, like, the viewpoints that I express a lot of times. You can't really have those viewpoints because people will accuse you of all sorts of things. Um, but for me like there's there's truth in both right like i uh, i understand the argument from one side uh is like oh it's a victim mentality i can understand where that comes from um but you can't uh invalidate other people's experiences and invalidate the the way the world they that they've experienced the world and like that's like one of the things that people talk about and what they mean when they talk about white privilege is like you you can't understand that and thank goodness you can't understand that because you've never had to experience it like necessarily right <clears throat> and then you know you yeah. have people who take things way too far saying way too crazy things on both sides um but yeah like there are you know because the what what people on that side of the argument who say oh it's a victim mentality what they'll bring up is they'll bring up uh uh, Morgan Freeman and, and Denzel Washington and the way they speak and the way they said, you know, like, I knew the cards were stacked against me, but that was never going to stop me kind of thing. And it's like, 
I think yeah. that's exactly what this Doctor Who actor was saying, but like yeah. also saying like it's because well, of I, I, you know, this is like a problem we've had again, like, you know, where people have been noticing, you know, like a notice, there's been a noticeable drop in the the quality of dialogue throughout over time, you know, in Hollywood, where a lot of shows really hit or miss and some of them just have like the most hilariously awkward dialogue that's so stiff and doesn't work and it doesn't build chemistry between anyone. Yeah. And, you know, people chalk it up to shitty writing and people being uninspired. Uh, I chalk it up to like, you know, but probably with this actor experience where it's like there's been a couple generations of Hollywood families now. Um, they're keeping their kids in the pipeline, you know, they're putting them through the acting schools and the writing schools and stuff like that. And like, you know, their kids are going to get picked over those, like, you know, people who aren't related to them. And well, uh, you know, the, the it, thing it is... breaks your brain when you, when you work so hard and then you get passed up by someone else's fucking kid because of nepotism, essentially. And, yeah. You know, that's when you start going like, well, and, you know, with John Boyega, you know, we were, we talked about this in star Wars where the, the ball was hump fumbled so poorly during all three of those movies that it just he just feels like i must be under some kind of racist assault by some system that hates black people <laughs> you know well, because yeah, I literally yeah. i have the main role at disney and i've just been shoved into a side as to, into a side character role not because as you and i have discussed those three movies just got put through some really weird chop shop shit and everything feels just jointed and wrong and broken yeah. but also because, you know in other systems and i feel so bad for the guy you know like it, it would break your brain it breaks your brain when things are fumbled that badly and you'd realize that yeah most people just want their kids in the system and they want other people out. And even if their kids are, aren't talented. Yeah. And don't, and don't worry, rage baiter and, and outrage Andes. I know exactly what you'd say. You would say first mm -hmm. that, um, that John Boyega is a side character. He was never, he was never meant to be the lead character of, of the sequel trilogy. And my counter argument immediately is, well, then is Han Solo a side character? Yeah. Because is Leia, is Leia and, side character and, and is then Chewbacca? That's like, ignoring it's a all. Good story. That's characters. ignoring all the context of the things we know where he was sold on this project as a certain thing, and then they just abandoned it completely. They changed. They, changed, they like, changed it. I bet they told him at the very beginning. Yeah, your character, like he's going to be this awkward dude, but by the end of it, he's going to be the super badass Jedi. I bet that that's exactly what they told him. Like he's like. Well, also Star all their Trek marketing person. material had him holding a lightsaber. So come on. Yeah, yeah like, there's that. There's that too. There's the scene of him like you know he get you know he squares up with uh you know with um uh, uh Ben Solo what's his name yeah Darth, Kylo uh, no Kylo Ren and it turns out you know then he gets shit on and I felt like they were setting up for the last movie where they would face off again and then he would beat him in a lightsaber a really badass lightsaber duel. But we didn't get any of that you know because fucking we can't have anything nice anymore at all ever. Because, uh, you know, yeah. or, you know, you know, some people, it turns out you need to be a little traumatized, a little fucking in the head to write good stories because you need to think about things that people just don't like thinking about in the day to day. So, yeah. uh, and, um, and if you've been in the, school the entire time, I just don't think it's a good, I don't think it's a good environment to learn how to write a good story and a craft. The one. other, um, the other thing that the rage baiters, they're going to be really mad at you. Trust me. Mm. They're going to be really mad at you because you said nepotism and hollywood you know garbage whatever and they're gonna argue mm. that the reason why hollywood is going downhill is because of something called dei do you know what that is mm. yeah it's diversity equity and inclusion i'm actually yeah. on the uh, diversity equity and inclusion board on our uh, real real estate board <laughs> yeah yeah see the rage so, man, baiters here. these are the people that say hollywood is going downhill because we we force inclusion on everybody we throw it in their face all the gay people and the transsexual people and the black people and the minorities it's because of dei that movies and hollywood are so morally bankrupt and corrupt and movies are shit it's because they put a minority in there when they should have put someone else yeah. And uh, what I would say to that is uh, there are arguments for those things, um, mm. but but this is not <laughs> this is not the realm you argue those things. Like it, yeah. if if there's some evidence um, of certain professions, like in incredibly high skill professions, like doctors, where you have people being accepted into colleges who aren't qualified simply because they need to meet a quota based off of DEI, then we can have a discussion around those things. Um, hmm. th this, this is acting. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and even though we, we as a society would say, well, the person who's most qualified for the job should get the job, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that, that's just not true in acting because, you're hiring a specific type of person for a specific type of role. And yeah. so 
you probably aren't even auditioning. Like, you're not going to audition fucking Leonardo DiCaprio to play Harley Quinn, right? Like, because it doesn't make sense. But you're not forcing, then, a woman on screen because, like, that's just not how things really work. Um, mm. But, hey, you guys can be mad all you want uh, and say, and say it, like, really weird things like John Boyega is a side character in Star Wars and was never meant to be the lead character but then on the other hand still be mad that Disney is forcing inclusion and equity and fucking Mary Sue because Ray is a you know like like your arguments make no sense are they backseating a black guy and that's a problem or not a problem but like they force a woman on you and that's a problem like and I don't I don't get your arguments guys like I just don't yeah, I, 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 you know it so no, it makes no sense um but but you're, but you're right. <laughs> that's what you got to say to them yeah when we talk about um you know a lot of a lot of products being very bad a lot of television and movies not being great these days um x-men 97 is still hitting and also i finished shogun and uh yeah that show i, I need to watch uh, yeah i need to watch shogun for sure um x-men 97 though man i gotta tell you last night that was phenomenal like, yeah what an we'll, we'll get there like, we'll get there we got one one thing okay. to talk about before that one very no important point. thing what else do what else do we need to yell about we well it's not yelling we have to talk about uh, I, I don't know if you watched it but uh we have to talk about the deadpool and wolverine trailer that dropped oh i haven't watched it yet no oh not well. seen, you know me i'm not the, i'm not the biggest trailer you know me but this is i've been consistent on this i'm not the yeah. biggest trailer guy so no yeah, like i I think I've seen some stills like, you know, I heard that oh it really just showed off the suit for Wolverine and then people really like how it looks so cool. And eh, how, like it, it kind of you know? showed off the suit like you still don't get the cowl. You still haven't seen him with the cowl on aside from like merchandise um, stuff. Yeah. But in the trailer, he didn't have the cowl on, which again, like I still want to see. But they're saving for the movie, which is fine. The movie. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that would make sense. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of Old Man Logan references in the trailer. Old Man Logan is a comic book series where essentially the villains kill all the heroes. Um, and Wolverine, unfortunately, uh, is the last man left. Well, left. W- Wolverine helps them, but oh. but because he is like uh, manipulated into like a rage, like through this these hallucinations that Mysterio is making him see, and so he yeah. ends up killing a bunch of uh, superheroes. Red Skull kills a bunch of Avengers, um, and the, like the, the, it's it's a really good series. Is that, it's, is, is that what we saw in Logan the movie that came out that made me cry? Like, uh, not not really. It's it's kind of yeah. like they they try to do old man Logan a little bit, but like it's more like the future of Wolverine and the Fox films, right? Like this is the yeah. same Wolverine from the Fox films in Logan, and Patrick Stewart is the same Professor X, right? Whereas like we get the impression, at least I get the impression in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer that this might be a completely different Wolverine. Um, it could be the same because we see like, you know, kind of like when, like if, you, if you've watched the old X-Men movies, like the first appearance of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is like he's sitting at a bar, right? Yeah. And so um, it, in the trailer, it opens with him sitting at that same bar and Deadpool walks up to him. And he's like recruiting him, kind of thing, right? Uh, but I'm guessing there might be something where like that Wolverine doesn't make it or something, and he has to go find a different version of Wolverine because like mm. we never saw Fox's, you know, Logan in a suit. Mm. Like he was never in his suit, and so maybe it's the same one, and he just puts on the suit for this movie. But I get the impression that it's a completely different Wolverine. Mm. Um. And he said, uh, Deadpool tells him, he says in the trailer, he's like, you know, you couldn't save your world. And we see all these kind of like more or less tombstones. We don't know if they're actually mm. tombstones, but they look like tombstones. Uh, we see um, Ant Man, like Giant Man, right? Like when Ant Man goes to giant, it's he's called Giant Man. Uh, we mm. see his uh, disembodied head. Uh, yeah. with the helmet on like and yeah being, i saw like, i saw a lot i saw a lot of stills of that of the disembodied yeah it's being like used that. as a yeah. base for apparently cassandra nova who will be the villain um and that's another old man logan reference uh like hank pym who is giant man not scott lang in in, the, in that series is killed it creates a city called pym falls um mm-hmm. his, his his giant skeleton is just, just like sitting there uh, so that's like a reference for Old Man Logan. There's a lot of Old Man Logan references. We also see Lady Deathstrike, um, who's apparently returning. Pyro again. Azazel um, is coming back. Like lots of lots of different things. Cassandra Nova, again, big villain. 
big history. She's she's Charles Xavier's twin sister who he in the womb uh, he could sense she was evil so he like subdued her she was stillborn so she wasn't really alive but then like what the fuck <laughs> what okay so she she ends up like clinging to like walls in a sewer kind of and like eventually like grows to what? like exist why did she do that that sounds and, disgusting and she oh dedicates so she what, dedicates her whole like life the- to getting revenge on her brother on Charles. Yeah, no sh- yeah, um, no shit. <laughs> and she she's way more powerful. Like she not only does she have like telepathy, she has telekinesis. Um she can bring out like powers and mutants who do like they haven't like emerged yet. Um mm-hmm. she can she can do all sorts of shit, bro. She's super powerful. Uh we see yeah, her a little bit in the trailer. Or- can we go back to that origin for a second? Yeah. So Wait, is, do they dump like her genetic material or something like out of a fucking dumpster, and that like that da- da- dead fetus like started moving with its powerful psychic energy and like grew into like a human being? Is that what you told me, or like a like a villain? Uh, so, so <laughs> she was still born, but she like still uh-huh. survived, and then uh-huh. like um her body clung to sewer walls, right? Uh-huh. You follow me? Um, uh-huh. and she started like building herself back over like decades, right? And uh, you know, she Man, planned her revenge. How know? they get how they get away with that one? Holy shit! Damn. Well, I mean, that's some, you know, uh, that's some you know. stuff. Yeah, that is definitely a thing that happened. It is. Yeah, it's a re- it's a real it's the it's the actual canon of Cassandra Nova. Mm. So, um, sorry, this mother suck is calling me like always. Every time I fucking podcast, he wants to call me. So, uh-huh. uh, but yeah, uh, lots of, lots of cool stuff. I mean, we, we see dog pool, you know, Deadpool's the, the dog Deadpool. Um, he's really ugly. Uh, and, uh, we see, uh, we see, uh, some, uh, some mystical, you know, you know, you know, the teleporting thing Dr. Strange can do. We see one of them things. Um, obviously the TVA is also there and we see Deadpool slaughtering TVA agents. It's really cool. So, Uh um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the movie, but, uh, yeah, lots of good stuff in the trailer. Yeah, no, you know, we're, we're seeing it in theaters. Obviously we're seeing another movie in theaters soon, by the way. Can't wait. Yeah. Fan of Um, Woo Woo. Yeah. That's going to be fucking bad. See pod racing again on the big screen. Yeah. Um, definitely going to be a really good time. Absolutely. You know, it's probably like when they do, re-releases of star wars movies in theaters like they 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 always do the phantom menace like i i don't think i've ever seen them do a different one um well and, i think it's because like the re- the release of the original star wars movies was so iconic that like you know it's hard to recreate that well they did um they did return of the jedi well like a, i would love two to see empire ago? strikes i would love to see empire strikes back that'd be fantastic i think the next one for empire would probably be 2028 Cause that would be what 45 years we gotta see it we gotta go see that in theaters if we're still yeah. around and there hasn't been oh no 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 the... next year would the be 45 next... years yeah the next year let's go but they should empire, also dude. so they should do empire next year but they should also do revenge of the sith next year because that'd be 20 I years mean, of revenge if, of the sith if you're making me pick bro i'm gonna go see empire strikes back i don't i'm sorry i'm gonna man. see both okay yeah that's true um could... but yeah because look at it listen they did a re-release of the phantom menace in like 2012 Mm-hmm. For like like when 3D was getting big, yeah, uh, and I saw that <laughs> too. I've seen Phantom Menace like five times in theaters, and like three of those times were on re-releases. I've only seen it once in theaters when I was a really really young kid, so I barely remember it. But I remember that was the first, and I'm always proud to say this, but it was my first Star Wars movie. You know, I'm a Phantom Menace baby. I was in a you know I'm part, I wasn't inducted or anything like that. Yeah, uh, into Star into actual the original trilogy until much later in my life. Like I grew up with the sequel trilogy. My dad always told me, "Yeah, there's some other Star Wars movies. Maybe you can watch we'll watch them sometime if they're on." And then one day, uh, The Empire Strikes Back was on FX. Um, yeah. And that w- and that was like really awesome. I remember when they used to it. rerun Star Wars on Spike TV all the time. Yep, yep, that's true. Spike yeah. TV. I miss Spike TV. But I never watched them on there because uh, no. uh, why would I watch it with commercials? Spike TV had a uh, Star Trek. That's where I got. Yeah. Uh, that's when I started, first started watching Star Trek too. So. 
Anyway, on to why we're really here. Yeah, yeah. X-Men why are we really here? X-Men 97 first. X-Men 97 first, because damn, dude, what is just a master class in voice acting, 120%. Everyone who's, who voice acts in this show is a living god of voice acting. Um... Uh, the only one I know by name is Jennifer Hale, but her voice is literally – she voices a lot of video game female characters, and her voice has mm. not changed in like 40 years. So I don't know what kind of witch magic she does to preserve her vocal cords, but man, she's, she's, she's great. And the guy who plays Beast is just Chef's Kiss Perfect. That guy that guy is an awesome voice actor. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get on this soapbox and say that they – I really hate that they're using like – a list a a tier celebrity actors for voice acting in these video game movies and not like you know the voice actors that have been working in the video game industry for like 20 15 20 30 years now it's a, it's a damn shame it really is the mario movie would have yeah. been 10 times better if they had real like voice act i'm sure those oh, like no, chris no pat was doubt. fine but like you know i just like fred armison is like you know freaking elder kong like you know I, I don't know seth rogan as donkey kong like really like i don't know man i just yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. usual suspects. Like that, like you know, yeah, they, they, that's just what they do. And there's so many talented voice actors that dedicate their life to this, and th- those movies could be ten hundred times better if they used like the actual voice actors that have been practicing this art for like you know decades now, and they yeah. don't, and it sucks. That's all I got. That's all I got to say. Sorry, I'll get down for myself. Well, the, and <laughs> we'll go through the episode. You know, we'll go through the events of the episode just to like you know fully talk about it. But I I already know the number one question that comes out of this is. Who is Bastion, and what does this mean, <laughs> yeah. and what's going to happen next? Um, what is going to happen next? Tell us, because you know well, all the things. I bet you know well, who that was the minute you saw that clock tick the thing, and you're like, uh, who? according to X-Men series number 136, 135, I know exactly who this is. And then you No, like push it's, up e- it's even worse than that, bro. <laughs> Fucking after, okay. the, after the episode... This motherfucker <laughs> wanted to well, he called me. <laughs> how how is that guy? Why wasn't he in the original X Men cartoon, bro? He was he came out. He he was in, he was created in 1996 when the show was ending. Come on, like of course he wasn't gonna be okay. in there. Like yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I I know who he is. Um, I haven't read a whole lot with him. I I know his basic story. Um, up like until uh we believe he's dead. Um. I didn't read beyond that because I just haven't. Um, but I know he, he reemerged recently in X-Men comics, maybe like four or five, three or four years ago, something like that. Uh, yeah. But uh, but he's a pretty important figure. Um, so we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. But first, um, we the episode opens with Gambit's funeral, Nightcrawler giving a, a nice, beautiful eulogy. And, uh, mm-hmm. bro, I don't... I, I'll never understand people who don't like Nightcrawler. Uh, yeah, I fucking Same. I love Nightcrawler. He's, cool. he's so chill. Like he, even when he was like a teenager, he was just about like being chill and like partying yeah. and being yeah. like a rational, per- rationalizing with you know his mutation and like you know trying to be a normal person despite of everything that's happened to him and also enjoying the fact that he can teleport places. You know, he's a, he's very much like a really well written character for sure. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites. Like I really loved him in that uh, X Men Evolution or whatever that was. You told me that was. It was well animated in the early two thousands. I really like that show. Yeah, I fu- I fucking love that crawler. Uh, so it's a it's a very nice uh, nice funeral kind of thing, and uh, Rogue isn't there, and and uh, Jubilee's kind of upset about it. Um, and Nightcrawler's like, yo, hey, yo, she's she's got she's got her own way to deal with this shit. Uh, yeah. And then we just see Rogue going fucking ham, fucking sandwich on people. Fucking Going breaking into right. military bases military and shit. Bases. Yep, yep, breaking down uh, robots, like just going like Superman mode, Hulk mode, depending on yep. what needed. Um, yep. just uh, Hulk was called intel. out in this episode as well. We got we got a yep. Hulk a Hulk Easter egg. Hulk. Uh, yep. And not only that, uh, the guy, the leader of the base is none other than General Ross, uh, aka mm-hmm. Red Hulk, uh, aka mm-hmm. the guy who presented the Scovia Accords. We don't know if this takes place in the MCU, so we can't like draw those lines. Infer, uh, yeah, infer. Yeah, sure. uh, and uh, then she goes and uh, and sees our good old friend Captain America, who again, we don't we don't know we can't say it's the same MCU Captain America. We don't know that. Yeah. Um. um so I want to ask you, as someone who didn't watch the original cartoon, were there many of these crossovers? Because I know it's yes. not like out of the ball. Yeah. There were. Okay. Yeah, there was. No, uh, Captain America was in it, but it was in the 1940s. Uh, Wolverine mm-hmm. was f- fought alongside him during World War II. They did a spy mission together. Um, yeah, that sounds fucking badass. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, Spider Man was in it, and apparently Spider Man's going to be in this too oh, so cool. at some point. 
Um, nope. Yeah, so they, they do crossovers uh, every now and then, but it's like, you know, it's still it's still an X Men show. So, um, yep. yeah, so it's cool to see Captain America, uh, but people, some people are going to be really mad about this version of Cap, and other people are going to be like, it's not that different from Cap. People get mad uh when there's the by the book captain america and stuff and like it, like in the comic book world like in the in the chat rooms and shit and the comment sections like this is what people are getting mad about like they don't like seeing captain america turning his back on mutants and stuff because yeah. he has to do things quote unquote by the book yeah but like like sorry rogue i don't want to go on your rampage across america and piss everybody off well not only that <laughs> i think there's a part of 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 captain america who knew that rogue might not pull back at the end and he didn't want to have to be the one to like stop her you know like he doesn't want to first of all he can't <laughs> like right let's be honest like rogue would beat the shit out of him yeah rogues are really rogues really like you know like honestly with her powers have been described it always seems like and, and all those like that in evolution right like Rogue, mm-hmm. there's like everyone talks about Jean Grey, like Phoenix, but then everyone else also like also, but Rogue's always there in the background. Like I can't literally touch someone because I could, she could take Jean Grey's power, right? If she really wanted to, yeah. is that something that she's capable? Yeah. Well, so. the reason the reason why she has the ability to fly and super strength and all this stuff is because she stole those powers from Miss Marvel. Yeah. Like, could she? I don't know. I guess because could he? She steal Wolverine's healing factor? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure there are comic runs where Rogue, uh, yes. you know, they have. A, where she goes all powerful and she steals everybody's powers and she goes like well, it's even in the original uh, X Men movies like where Wolverine wakes up in the middle of the night because he's like having a nightmare. Rogue wakes him up. Mm-hmm. She he stabs her with his claws. Mm-hmm. He starts freaking out. She touches him and heals herself. No, oh, yeah, that's right. So, I mean, so she can be really OP if she wants to. Like, absolutely. She's too busy being. She, she's too she busy is being OP. A sweet Southern. Too busy being a sweet Southern belle. Yeah. Calling everybody sugar. Sugar. Yeah. Yep. Um yep. and so Little yeah, she it's really funny when she just like BMs Captain America and throws a shield into the fucking mountains. <laughs> mountains like fuck you. She's like if you're not going to help, I guess you don't need this. <laughs> that little fr- so. that little frown that fucking Captain America's face when he zoomed in was hella funny. Yeah. Uh but while uh while she meets up with Captain America and they're investigating, they see this symbol OZT. I'll tell you what that means soon. Um mm. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, she ends up going to Mexico City, she tracks down Gyrick, um, and, uh, well, <laughs> uh, you know, she, yeah, she, she, um, she murders him, she murders him in plain view of everybody. Well, she doesn't and really murder good. him. Well, you're right, the fall kills him, you're right, I'm sorry. She kind of just, no, like, no, 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 that's, uh, that's Trask. Uh, <laughs> okay. no, 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 the, the guy in Mexico City that she absorbs, she, she absorbs mm-hmm. him, because she's looking mm-hmm. for Bolivar Trask, um, and, uh, while she is absorbing, she has a vision of, of Nimrod. Um, Nimrod is, a uh, is, like, this super fucking anti-mutant machine thingy from the future, uh, who essentially, like, even if you kill him, he just, like, kind of puts himself back together, and he's just, like, crazy powerful, um, which the vision of Not Nimrod... Powerful, crazy powerful. The, the, what the vision of Nimrod has to do with Bastion, um, mm. <clears throat> and so then we kind of cut to, like, Scott talking to the president, Cyclops talking to the president, and the president's like, bruh, I can't keep helping mutants in Genosha with this relief shit because people are going to be mad at me. And Scott gets real mad about it. So, um, yeah, they end up, all the X-Men end up going out to Genosha to help. And uh, while they're there, uh, Beast talks to that reporter, Trish Tilby, um, uh, about the problems yeah, mutant kind is facing. And holy bro, this guy, he goes philosophical on her. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. the, the voice actor was just delivering it, man. Like, just a, a voice acting in this episode was just online the entire time. Like, yep. gone, just, uh, man, God tier. Talking about, God-tier. like, the extent of her tolerance and shit. Like, holy, yeah, yeah. brother. He hit, he yeah, hit her sorry, hard with like... that one. Yep. Um, There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and then Gene and Scott, you know, they're, they're going on a recovery mission. They find Emma Frost. Her skin is made of diamonds. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a babe. Which, which I knew, like, the thing is, like, 
you know they're looking for for Madeline Pryor and and he's because Gene Sense is a telepath, right? And and my wife was like, "Oh, it's Maddie," and I was like, "No, it's Emma." <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> you, "I was like, you called it immediately." Well, it You're has not to be like Emma Frost. I, yeah. I, I I literally said I said no, it's Emma Frost. Her skin is made of diamonds. Like that's yeah. the way she survives that, right? Like like it's gonna be like I'm sure Madeline Pryor still survived, but like it's yeah. hard. It's gonna be harder for her to survive a building falling on her than someone whose skin turns into diamonds. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a there was a joke about you know she said something about like I do well under pressure like a, okay cool diamond joke gotcha. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Meanwhile, you're buried on you're literally sitting on top of a pile of corpses by the way you know no joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, no and then, or anything. <laughs> yeah, and then Scott cries because he thinks Madeline Pryor's dead, right? Mm. Uh, and yeah. then while they're there, Jubilee's also trying to convince Roberto, aka Sunspot, to tell his parents that he's a mutant uh because like she doesn't want him to like find out when he dies on the news or something right like something like that and uh listen like i I, this is where like because it's funny because the the guy who calls me who loves this show now he was very anti the show because disney is gonna woke it up and whatever and just because like those are his talking points like whatever like he's he's really dumb about it sometimes but like He's like, bro, I, you know, the show's so good. I'm so glad you told me to watch it and blah, blah, blah. And when I talked to him last night, I was like, oh, so you're you're not mad about all the woke stuff in this episode? Uh, and he's like, I didn't see any woke stuff. I'm like, bro, come on. Like, th- this is very thinly veiled allegory for, like, someone coming out to their parents as gay. Like, like, th- like, like almost, like, word for word, bar for bar, that's, like, the experience that people have coming out. They don't want to come out to their parents because they're afraid of how they'll react. And even right. though his mother reacted very well and still loved him, which again is uh, like really touching. Not even, you know, not even like like not even like gay. Like it's just an experience of like telling Ooh. your parents like, hey, I want to live my life differently than yeah. you guys have led yours. You know, like everyone, you know, you're right. Maybe in this instance, you're right. Maybe it feels good for some people to feel seen about how difficult that is. But also like, you know, there's a lot more that people can infer. From absolutely. This. Absolutely. And well, and that's that's why. You know, you and I, I, th- I think you're very well aligned with me on this uh, mm-hmm. because we both come essentially from a school of Tolkien where, like, something isn't ever just one thing. Like, if, if the if the writer came out and said, this is the only interpretation of this, th- that you have to relate it to someone who's gay coming out, like, that's bad. But uh, yeah. us as the, as the viewer being able to infer that and apply it to that is good because we can apply it to other things as well and other people can have different perspectives and have their own interpretations of what they're seeing and that's what makes art beautiful right um and so yes definitely it can be applied to more than just just that but i you know when i watched it that's what i felt like they were hitting at um and so you know and and even when when Sunspot did tell his mother, like, yeah, I'm a mutant. She's like, oh, I know. Like, it's very touching for, like, a whole three seconds until she said, but but people can never find out. Which, again, you know, is something a lot of people can also relate to. It's like, they're accepted, but their their parents are afraid that no one else will accept them. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, the show just, like, to me, like, it keeps hitting. It keeps, keeps, throwing, hitting. Keeps, throwing, it keeps throwing bombs. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It keeps throwing bombs. Yeah, uh, and then Trask sends a message to the X-Men leading him to Madripoor. Madripoor is a major city in, in X-Men comics, especially for Wolverine. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, in in the same, not in the same, but like after that, they as they, they go pick up Rogue in uh, in Mexico City. Uh, mm. And we get this nice scene with, uh, with Nightcrawler and Rogue and then the, the reveal of the X-Men behind him. But um, for people who don't know, uh, who might not have picked it up or read much into it. Um, Nightcrawler calls Rogue his sister mm-hmm. uh, because they are technically brother and sister. Like, exactly. it's not it's not like just because he's like uh, a man of God that he views like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody as his brothers and sisters. His mom is Mystique and Mystique is more or less the adopted mother of Rogue. Like Mystique took in Rogue, raised her like as her mother, uh, and is the one who essentially like forces Rogue on the mission where Carol Danvers' powers are then stolen by Rogue, where she goes into mm-hmm. a coma. Like R- Rogue is Mystique's daughter, pretty much, uh, and well, 
I don't. Are they biological? To see little details like that sometimes escape me. They might. They I'm might sure even be biological. Cool. Yeah, um, there's probably some kind of like storyline, like, oh, you're my long lost cousin because we have this and this and this. Yeah, there was, and it was even in the X Men '92 cartoon, um, because of Graydon Creed, who is the son of Sabretooth and Mystique, uh, mm. and Nightcrawler then is his brother and tries to save him, even though Graydon Creed is um, the leader of uh, the Friends of Humanity, an anti-mutant group who wants to see mutants prosecuted and persecuted Mm -hmm. uh, until his heritage is found, which he learns about at the same time, and then they want to kick him out of the group, and the only way to not kick him out is he has to uh, kill Nightcrawler and Rogue, his brother and sister. (laughs) So uh, there's uh, all sorts of convoluted shit with that, yeah. So... Um, but yeah, the, the, that's a very nice scene. And, uh, then you, they go to this building in Madripoor and they see all these like crazy futuristic sentinels. Um, some might call them, uh, prime sentinels or sentinel prime, uh, which, uh, again, ties back to this guy, Bastion. Um, and so, yep, they see Trask, uh, about to like jump off a building because he's scared of like the future and the Sentinel program and what uh what Mister Sinister is turning him into and all this shit, um and then uh Rogue stops him, <laughs> she grabs him, uh and then she drops him. She's like, "Hey, fuck you, bitch." <laughs> yeah. Um and so yeah, then uh the X Men are kind of just like, "What the fuck just happened?" Um. And this unlocks, like, a secret sentinel technology within Bolivar Trask, and they fight, and he's, uh, kicking their booties pretty well, um, and, uh, and then, uh, and then, and then, uh, Cable shows up. Uh, and by the way, the episode is called Bright Eyes, which is a reference to Cable, so, yeah. yeah Cable shows up, and he's yeah. like, Dad! Yeah. He's, he's, like, he's like, we don't have time for a family reunion, Dad! <laughs> yeah, so. Good old, good old Cable. Yep, uh, and then we see Mr. Sinister is meeting with this mysterious man named uh, Shaw. Uh, I, 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 maybe I'm, I skipped over the part where, uh, where, uh, not Shaw, sorry, Bastion. But there's a guy called Sebastian Shaw. It's not this guy. Uh, Bastion. Uh, there's a scene where he also kills Gyrick. Um, after Gyrick is recovering from being touched by just, Rogue, not just kills him, just straight up murders him, bro. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like that was really, that was really intense. That probably would have been you that probably that kind of scene probably wouldn't have been in the original cartoon, right? Or would it have been? Was there fucked up shit like that? Uh, yeah. I mean, there was, yeah. but but I think this series is way more dark and way more even mature than that series was. Mm-hmm. But like, there was still a lot of mature content in it. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, Sinister is like, hey, yo, brother, uh. You kind of like gave the X Men away some shit, bruh, and uh, I don't approve. And he's like, bruh, it doesn't matter. I got this shit. Um, and uh, then he goes to this this vacant barber shop where uh, a very alive Magneto is being held with a uh, power yeah, dampening yeah. collar. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and yeah, Bastion taunts him uh, by using a metal razor to shave his face. And then the episode ends. Um, so a couple things. First, OZT. We see that yeah. quite frequently in this episode. OZT means Operation Zero Tolerance. Um, it is a program, an anti-mutant program, that was started by Bastion. Uh, Bastion is more or less a combination of Nimrod and Master Mold. Um, he is a guy in comics who rises very quickly to a high-level position in the U.S. government, um, and he tries to push all these anti-mutant bills and whatever, and Operation Zero Tolerance is one of those, and the only way it actually passes is um, when Graydon Creed, who I mentioned before, who is the son of Sabretooth and Mystique, is killed. Um, And that's, like, the catalyst that he needed to get it to pass. Uh, So, it's hard. I don't think they'll go with that story here because part of that storyline in comics is like um this reporter was trying to this reporter who worked for the daily bugle in fact um spider-man reference um was trying was going to publish uh 
a report about Graydon Creed's her- heritage about his parents, uh, which would have been really bad because, uh, you know, he as a friend of humanity, uh, he would have been exposed and kicked out and again, also prosecuted. So um, Bastion ends up killing him, killing the reporter who works for the Daily Bugle so that the report never comes out. And so I don't know. I don't think they'll go with that storyline, but and it appears that Operation Zero Tolerance is already activated, more or less. Um, but yeah, Bastion is just this very powerful character. He can't be probed. Like, his mind can't be probed by psychics and telepaths. Um, and yeah, he's a very anti-mutant guy. Um, he eventually is captured in comics by S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, with Iceman's help. Uh, and later... Um, okay. Okay. I talked about my prediction for Gambit, right? I told you that, that right? Right? Yeah, you thought he was going to come back. You yeah, said he was come back. I think I think Apocalypse is going to resurrect him as his Horseman of Death, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Bastion to me is a kind of a tie-in because this brother, this brother gets 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 beheaded by Apocalypse's Horseman of Death. So, I'm just saying. Uh, it could, it could, some things could happen, but uh, I don't know if they actually will. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty badass. Yeah, it, this this episode is like obviously like really intense, but also it's it's a setup, it's a foundation for the ne- the final three episodes of this season, really. So I thought it was brilliant. Yep. Oh. <laughs> everything, everything so far is great. I don't see foresee any issues in the show unless they pull a complete 180 and take it to total doo doo poop town. Yeah, but nobody. Do you see that happening? No, I, they would have to try really, really hard. Like it would be harder for them to mess up the show than to keep making them keep it good. And that's like that's yeah. a good place. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it'll be interesting to kind of see how everything unfolds, and and obviously, like they're not just gonna do like exactly what happens in comic books like that would be really foolish because you know there's nothing refreshing about that they're gonna do something new something creative something that like speaks to their artistic and creative values or whatever um but it's really interesting like and and i think they do a very good job of bringing elements from the comic books but also telling their own stories in a lot of ways so it's been it's been fantastic so far and yeah. that brings us to yeah. the, bad the bad batch. batch. Yeah. Which is like, this is like the best filler episode so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? To me, like, I don't know how else to describe it, man. Like it's just, you know, they're just getting to the base and getting in there. Nothing important really happened. We didn't, le- they didn't go any deeper into like, you know, the vault or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm really excited to, to see how the, the finale, I think the finale is going to be great. How many more episodes are left? Do you know? One more, two more, one more, one more. All right. Yeah. yeah. And, and the thing is like, I, I could tell I enjoyed the episode because when it was over, I was like, oh, that was a pretty quick episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, it felt like it went by pretty fast, whereas, like, usually I'm just like, ah, these are pretty long episodes. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty good episode. I mean, like, he, like you know, yeah, they're, they, 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 they're breaking into the base. Uh, I'm pretty sure I also predicted that Emery would help them. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Like I, I saw some so like Star Wars all like like their Twitter account will like repost bad batch stuff for some reason. And like one of the writers or workers, someone who works on the show was like, Oh, you like no one will ever predict how our show ends and I'm like, Bro, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how your show ends. Like it's it was very clear that Emery was having second thoughts because of the children thing. Like, of course when she sees Echo, she's gonna help him in some way or another. Um, and if it's not helping them, then the the second prediction is she's going to help Omega escape. And those things are like essentially the same. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was very clear. Uh, we should have said this before we did anything, but spoiler alert. So oh, if yeah, if, spoiler. If, if too late. it's just way, way too late now, bro. They're spoiled yeah. up and down. Well, it's, it's in the title down. of the stream and I'll put it in the, in the description true. of the just, podcast and YouTube. They just, they just agree. Well. Just, they agree just by looking at it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, the fuck, fucking Admiral Rampart is stupid as fuck. 
uh, still was just like, eh, you don't, you're not loyal to anybody. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Leave Crosshair alone, okay? He says he owes Omega. He owes Omega, all right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, thinking about it, like, bro, like, nothing really happens in this episode. <laughs> Like yeah, like, nothing at all. <laughs> there's a lot of action, but there's a lot of action sequences that are cool. Like you know, they need to detach from the shuttle, yeah. and freaking who's the guy who's in charge of the facility? He's like, yeah, uh, M-Lock. The M-Lock is like bad, bad. The bad bad has been detected on the shuttle. He's like scramble the like you know instead of just yeah. are we blind? Like he's like doing it all fucking cool instead of sounding like a complete dork when he's doing it. Um, you know, so he's yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. play the garrison, like deploy the fighters, like all like we've spotted the bad badges shuttle, we shut them down, deploy the transport, sweep yeah. the entire ship. No sweep one goes the in and out of that. Yeah. And of course Echo just gets through that all immediately because of plot armor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Don't let like anyone the- out of the hangar without a full workup. Like yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, he's being hemlock and like, you know, he's being all in charge and shit. And he's not, like, telling anybody what's going on because he doesn't want to be fucking embarrassed that, like, you know, this fucking clone force that he's literally been tracked with, ta- like, you know, cracking down, literally found him first. Yeah. So, you know, um, it's yeah. a... And they're, you know, Echo sneaking around. I, I'm starting to like Echo a lot. I think he's probably one of my most favorite out of the Bad Batch. You know, if you have so much experience with him and everything like that and, you know, everything that's happened to him. And, you know, it's just like that line where fucking, like, you know, I, I was just doing my job. You know, that's what she told him, you know. Yeah. He's like... Like, oh, I fucking heard that one before. <laughs> you know, <so. laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Like he's like, oh brother, man. <laughs> he's like, well, That's I mean, what you're and they, they kind of did the same thing earlier with like uh, with with Rampart and Crosshair, where like where Rampart kind of said the same thing. Is like, oh, I th- like I thought like a good soldier. Like I thought you followed orders or whatever. Like you know what happened to that? Uh, and he was Crosshair was like. Yeah, well, uh, the Empire fucked us both in the asshole, so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. no thanks. I'm good. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, uh, I-, I like Echo, too. Echo's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's a um, lot, but unfortunately, I think the, last, the rest of the Bad Batch is just, like, you know, they're kind of, like, one-trick ponies, almost. They try to do something interesting with Crosshair, but it seems like he's just turning into Crosshair again. Um you know, I, you know, I just, I, you know, it's, 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 we didn't have as much time. I, I don't, I don't know what else to say on that whole front. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the most, most of the Bad Batch feel very one-dimensional at this point. Like, they're not interested in doing any form of like character growth or anything with them. Like, all, all they ever want to do is protect Omega or save Omega. And so it's like when that's like your yep. entire character. Um, you're kind of limited. Whereas, like, Omega, right? Like, she is now, like, the central point of everything. So, like, it's all about her growth and her development and, you know, her, her, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, moxie and her, uh, uh, is ostentationism a word? Um, yeah. I don't fucking Has Omega know. killed anybody yet? Huh? Has Omega killed anybody yet? I mean, she, you know? she used to just shoot people with her weird bow, laser bow thing. Oh, I don't know okay. if anybody died, but... Okay. I mean... I don't know. Like, I'm worried that, like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, maybe, like, Omega... Because you know how they... So this episode, like, you know, Omega crawled through the walls again, right, guys? So what happened was, is that, like, they had this thing where they did the exact same thing last episode where there was kind of, like, a lead up to whether or not she would get caught. So I wonder if yeah. she's going to get caught, like, the third time and, like, kill that scientist, like, with the hand-to-hand, with, like, her mm. bare hands or with- like that like it'd be really intense we also saw the giant uh the monster thing that like when you give it electricity it grows bigger and bigger that that thing's back again for like the fifth time in star wars and i'm pretty sure uh they don't just show that for no reason i'm pretty sure they're gonna use that to escape yep yep just gotta get it out of containment yeah which won't be hard because they'll just break in and shoot everybody (laughs) Anybody, yeah, will notice that. Hey, guys, there's like four guards that haven't like reported in yet, and yeah. like you know, just some of the janitor found like two dead bodies. Like you know, that hey, doesn't happen. Hey, there's some, so there's was... some unusual activity happening all over their like base, where like uh, some unknown code is hacking into all our systems. Uh, maybe yeah. we should go check that out or not because we don't give a yeah. shit. Like the most fucking protected security focused base in all of the galaxy and echo can just plug into any terminal he wants and never be found yep well maybe it's like that's why he's such a, a badass boss bitch i mean maybe um, maybe and then and then just gets discovered by emery of all people 
I'm Emrika. Echo, or not Echo, he is Echo. Omega believes in you. Show me why she believes in you. You're a clone, damn it. Uh, yep, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That, I mean, it, it was a good episode. It was a good episode, and hopefully the finale is also good. Uh, I th- I think at this point with one episode left of the series, uh, we could fully wash our hands and uh, accept that uh, Tech is dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And let's say, and it, dude, can I tell you something? If he yes. comes back and saves the day in the next episode, I'm actually kind of mad. Like low key, like yeah. I think that's kind of bu- like kind of just out of nowhere bullshit. Well, it absolutely is out of nowhere. Yeah, but but in the only way so so the only way i imagine anything remotely similar to that happening is like while the bad batch breaks into tantus they like find his body in like a, a band uh a, a fucking tank a bad, well, fucking fucking what's it called a, ba- a bacta 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 ba- back to tank yeah back to tank yep and like they just find his body in there and like they they, they take him out and he's just alive and then like whatever like then they like yeah. but but he's he will be in no condition to rescue anybody if that's the case yeah, that, that's an that's an interesting suggestion like if they're like maybe they found his body and they like were keeping him alive so they can interrogate him or yeah. something yeah something cool. like that yeah. I, I mean i can imagine that happening so it's possible he's still alive but who knows but not yeah. highly not likely this shape. highly like, unlikely yeah. Do we know the runtime of the last episode? I don't. It's like it's probably I'm guessing gonna be, an it's hour, gonna be like th- so, huh? no, nah, it'll be like thirty minutes. No. no like okay. Everything else. I, think I'm, I'm, I can imagine I'm they'd like well, at that point they just just release two episodes and make them both like you know you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I don't know unless unless they are gonna release like a two part finale next week but I don't I don't think they announced that I'm pretty sure they just said. This week is the penultimate episode, which means there's one episode left. Yep. Penultimate means one more, right? After this? I, I have no idea. All right. Well, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's uh, those are, that's all the episodes. That's all the, the shows. And uh, both shows, good this week. Um, the next show on my list to watch will be Fallout because I know you, you – have you finished watching it? Yes, I have. Okay, and I, so we'll talk about that at some point. I'll watch it. Yep, that'd be um, great for me to like have all my Fallout, but what I know of Fallout and all the lore and stuff like that, combine you know just kind of like the different what we usually do, except uh, yeah. instead of comic, it's a video game. I'll let you. I'll let you run the entire show. Got it. You can you can I do won't. the intro. You can I will yell at you. you can answer. I will, you can lead the questions. I will talk about Manchester United, even though I don't know anything about. No, uh, you, no, you talk about you talk about things that you do know that I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk about um. I'll, I'll talk in a fake British accent. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey! It's not fake. First of all, it's very <laughs> genuine, real. Oh, old red sixty two just followed. I think that's what it said. Uh, it oh. came up really quickly on the screen. So, uh, Bets, is you. that you? Because you're old as hell. I'm just kidding. No, I love you, Bets. Huh? That might be. That might have been a guy from one of my kill leaders. <laughs> I probably should. That was probably a little too mean. Maybe red delta. Mean. It said red delta. Oh, that's. Does that mean yes? I don't know. If, I don't know what that means. Well, I don't know, but uh, much love. Thank you, uh, Red yep. Delta. Yep. Um, yeah, Old Red sixty two. Do you know who that is, Chair? It might be. It may be Betts. All right. My, well, uh, the guild leader from uh, the Star Wars game that I play. Mm. So. Do you do you have a raid in like three minutes or? No, we have uh, we have convoys and we do uh, like uh, space raids. We do raids and like con uh, group content in space. Gotcha. Are you are you done with RP? Or are you? No, I'm not done with it, but I do I do both. You know. Well, I mean, yeah. like, like is is it like off season for RP, or is it like? No, there's no off season. I just oh, do, okay. do it all. You know, okay. I do all RP, right. but I also do the convoy because I want good parts to put into my ship. Cool, wicked, insane. Yeah. Well, thank you for the for the follow old old red sixty two and uh, red delta. Ooh. Yeah. If you guys want to be like old red sixty two, you can also follow the Twitch stream. Smash Hello. that follow button. Smash it. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, old red sixty two is an older name of mine. I am definitely not that old. No. Well, that's good. 
Well, okay. it's not like that's good, but like if you were actually 62, there's nothing wrong with that, and that'd be pretty cool. I'm sure you have like a lot of life stories, um, but uh, I didn't. Okay. I didn't assume that you were 62 years old because if a 62 year old is listening to me, I don't. I don't know what to say. I I appreciate yeah. it, but like you know, I, I don't think I'm that interesting for someone with that much life experience to even want to listen to. So, oh, oh Cage. Anyway, we're done for the day. Be honest, bro. When I talk to my grandparents, I'm pretty sure they start falling asleep. So. Oh, well, get me out of here. <laughs> okay. Internet. Thanks, Internet. Uh, follow, like, subscribe, rate, review. Sorry we're at the end of the show, Red 62. But we'll be back next week, and you can listen to everything we have to say and talk and chat and be like, you guys are dumb as fuck. Anyway, bye. Yep. Bye.